Hello and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. Today I have a pretty cool little art experience for you guys called Souvenir. It's a first person adventure by Mohini Dutta and Alejandro Gersi, Stone Huang, Ben Norksov, and Robert Yang. And I apologize if I just murdered anyone's name there. It's not my intention. Uh, but this is a really cool game, and this is for anyone who says that games can't be art. Uh, you need to check this out. The premise is surprisingly simple, but it actually, it well for me at least, uh, made me think a lot about myself and a lot about some sort of psychological stuff and baggage that you can bring on through your life. So the premise is that you're a girl who is moving on in her life, she's about to... I believe it's move out from her parents' house, and she's she's reevaluating her life, and she's looking around for the objects that define her personality, and she's picking which eight of those objects are going she's going to let define her personality as she becomes an adult. And it's it's a pretty heavy subject, honestly, but I think this game actually manages to do it some pretty good justice. I mean, it's surprisingly nice looking for a, a game that I don't believe had much, if any, of a budget. I believe it was more of just an indie experiment. And uh, I think they did a very good job with it. It's, it's quite nice. Uh, so we've got all this overlaid text in the air here. It says, time to go, I have to pack. What should I bring? I have to remember. So the first option here is you can pick up this card. Which, uh, a tower card called The Fool? I don't believe I'm gonna pick that up, actually. I'm not gonna... ...let foolishness define my life. So let's go down into our memories here. Remember, remember. And you slam... ...down into your bedroom here. Now, I'm not gonna read all the, the text for you here, but you can, uh... Take a moment, I'm gonna try and not jerk the view around too much so you can actually read some of this stuff. And it, uh, it gives you some insight into this girl's personality. And, uh, some really kind of fickle stuff, like that the mirror was too high. I mean, that's a really sort of a personal touch. But it makes a lot of sense, I mean, if you're thinking about a game that there would be... ...some really kind of careful details that would really help give you some insight into somebody's personality, and those are the types of things that really help you see a person. So we've got sort of a fragmented view of... ...what I believe is your subconscious and your memories. And you've got bits of the house, you've got bits of... ...her high school, bits of her church bits of the places she used to be all sort of jumbled together and the way you traverse this environment is you actually sort of leap across huge chasms and then you stick to whatever wall you happen to bump into so for example that tower looking structure here once the uh, cursor shows up as a circle I can actually clear that and jump to it and now this wall has become the floor which is an actually a very cool uh, method to progression as well. So pair that with the visuals and the really abstract surrealism. Uh, I really like the aesthetic of this game, and then with the psychological implications and the the serious, like, thinking this will help you do, and re-evaluation of your own situation, potentially, I think this is a really meaningful experience, and I think it's one that everyone should try, especially since this game is free. I have to say, the giant crows, though, really reminded me of Dark Souls. Not that that's bad, it's just kind of weird. Uh, if you play Dark Souls, you'll know at the beginning of the game you get carried around by a giant crow, and then there's one hanging out uh, for most of the game in the main place you spend time. Now, I had the graphics set up to the highest setting. I think, though, they might have jumped down, because I think the shadows looked pretty crisp, generally, and they're looking very dithered and, uh, bitmappy here. But anyway, my goal for traversing these areas is to find more objects... ...that I can choose to define myself by. Whoa. 
Oh, I guess I missed everything. Oh. Thankfully, since this is like an art game, you don't die or anything, you just uh, reset to the last surface you touched. Which, unfortunately, in my case, I'm hoping isn't going to keep dropping me off into the abyss multiple times in a row. Okay. So let's go, let's go searching a little bit and see what we can find. I really like this track that's sort of like Mobius strip looped around everything, it's really cool looking. Reminds me of Mario Galaxy. So you can see those large uh, focal points that are highlighted with circles there. Those are objects that we can take a look at and choose whether or not we want to bring with us. I'm going to try and be pretty careful when I'm jumping. Uh, the movement's a little bit slippery, so I might screw up. i try and pick areas that I can step on that make sense. What object is this? Cheerleading is stupid. Oh, that would be a pom-pom. I don't think I want that. It's not the most adult thing to define myself by. What is this? A frog? I realized that day that things die very easily, and we don't really mourn everything. That's surprisingly profound. I'll bring that with me, because it'll help me appreciate life. I mean, some serious care and attention went into, like, the whole message behind this, the whole thought process behind this. And, uh, yeah, it's very moving, actually. Which, when you consider how long we've been playing this for, like, less than ten minutes now, that's a pretty impressive feat to have enough of character build that you, like, you feel sort of like you're living vicarious through... through Vicariously through this character's eyes has potential not focused every year. That's a very telling thing, too. Well, we're not going to let the not focusedness bring us down, although having potential is a good thing to remember about ourselves. This is a really, it's an interesting way to build a narrative. I mean, we're learning about this character, and we're sort of coming up with what we think her memories are, but we're seeing them at the same time, and we're sort of passing our own judgment through our own lens about what we think she may have thought through this process. Whoa, okay, well, I didn't mean to cross over into a different axis there. Uh, let's finish falling so we can go back. Uh, let's find some more focal points here to jump over to. I'm thinking this is probably not the best way to do it. Let's jump up. Now what would be really an amazing finish to this is if, after you pick up whatever items you choose to pick up, it would sort of build a miniature story about her life based on those items. Now, I haven't finished this game, so I don't know that maybe that is actually what happens, but I, I kind of doubt it, considering how ambitious that would be. What's this one? That bitch Krista tripped me in the cafeteria and stepped on my... Well, that's awful. And, uh... I don't think we need that kind of negativity going forward. It's a terrible experience. It sucks that it happened but we're going to be adult about it and get over it. What's over here? keep seeing these light rays coming from something. I can't quite tell where, though. Man, this library thing goes on forever. Did it just go in a huge circle? What's this? My one and only Valentine, Peter Malloy, right before he moved to Hawaii. Well, that's sad, too. This girl's got a lot of sad experiences, which is all the more reason why I don't want her to have to bring those with her. My very first click, the mathletes. <laughs> well, let's take that one. Seems harmless enough, I suppose. Let's jump over to the track here. That's quite a nice somersault. Dad insisted I inherited his athletic side. 
Well, nothing really wrong with being athletic, I suppose. Give you some exercise. This looks like a tiara. Mom had debutante dreams that I had to live through sometimes. Uh, I don't think we need that. Seems like her family's pulling her in. Both of them in different directions. Her mother and father, I mean, are both pulling her in different directions that she wants to go in. And there's no reason she can't be her own person. I mean, think about how weird that is, that I'm, like, making these character judgments on a character that I've only learned about, like, third-hand through her own memories. Like, it's really weird. I'm playing as her, but I don't know her, but I'm learning about her. I don't know, I find this just really fascinating. I've always been interested in psychology, too, so this is something that really does grab my attention. And, it, I mean, as you can tell, I love abstract stuff. If you've watched anything on my channel, this is extremely abstract. But it's also focused in a way. It's abstract for a good reason. It's not abstract for the sake of being arbitrary or trying to make an artistic statement, although it's doing that as a result. So, like, for the viewers watching this, It'll be interesting to think that you can actually make judgments about my decisions about her life, about me. So you're learning about me through me playing through another character. And I've never encountered a game that's been able to really quite put that into perspective as well. Uh, do we have any context for this item? I don't think I just want to pick up some shoes. Although not having context for an item would be an interesting context in itself, since every other one has had that. Wow, that's cool looking. What's going on over here? Whoa, crap. Can I land on the roof? No, missed. There's quite a bit of ground to cover, too. You can spend some actual time really walking around and getting a feel for what's over here. Uh, that was not the best jump, but I guess it worked. Um, what I need to do is maybe try and get on this end. No! I wish we didn't have to fall off quite as much, and maybe that the falling off part didn't last quite this long. I mean, there's not much to be gained from that. We're not being penalized. This isn't the type of game where we're, we're trying to have dexterity and skillfully navigate this environment. It's more about the path that we take through it. Wow, that was a crow clipping through everything. And the jumping part is just uh, a necessary mechanism as a result of this environment being fragmented the way it is. And it's fragment the way it, fragmented the way it is because of the concept that we're presenting. So everything really makes a lot of sense why it is the way it is. And the game system seems like it really flows naturally through that progression. I know I went over here before, but I need to try and get a better jump over to some of these areas I haven't been able to reach. And I'm assuming that when we're done, what we need to do is go back over to the car with the boxes around it, and I guess we'll get to put our items in the boxes, hopefully. Um, okay. That was probably not the best way to get here, but we're here. The graphics sort of remind me a little bit of Psychonauts at the same time, which is kind of funny, too, considering the subject matter of that. It took forever hours to get here. <laughs> What is that, a tire? I don't know what statement that makes about her life. She remembers something took a long time. I don't know, if it was the other way around it would be more like patience, but it seems like in a way it's impatience. So we're trying to bring the most virtuous opportunities for her as possible. 
And it's interesting that it says for educational use only in the bottom right corner there. I'm not sure what other use you would really get out of this. I mean, other than <laughs> educational or recreational usage, I mean, this isn't like we're defining an actual person's life. I mean, what is what is that trying to say? <laughs> Um, a lot of open space here, but not a lot to see. Although, it is fun to explore. Very strangely shaped trees there, but that's fine. And we've got some beacons here to maybe navigate over to. It seems like there's really not much going on over here other than that tire. Uh, what's this? They said this trip was going to teach us about survival. Well, as a matter of practicality, that doesn't seem like a bad thing. So that's four of eight. What's this? Catching supper ruined my appetite. Oh, crap. And that's before we even started gutting it. Well... You take the good with the bad, I didn't mean to pick that up, but I did. So I guess she's going to, uh... Remain cognizant of... The process of catching and killing... Food. I guess that's not a terrible thing. It might teach you a little more humanity in your life. Excuse me, Crow, what were you doing over there? And that's the tire again, or what is this? It looks like backpack or something? We might need a vacation to recover from this one. And my pack weighed like 400 pounds. <laughs> well, I'll pick that one up too just because we're running up on the 20 minute mark. And I think that's where I started. There's still a few other areas I haven't really gone over to very much, but that's okay. We'll just uh, see what we can see. Make that jump over to that. Oh. I thought I was pretty clear about what I was jumping to, but apparently not. here. I'm not even sure exactly what the structure is supposed to be. It's like pulling me in a weird direction, actually. Is that the crow trying to screw me up? It's decided gravity is, like, above me now. Oh, okay, whatever. Um, I guess I'm here now. Now, can I drop off some of my items already, or do I need to keep going until I'm done? Or can I even drop off my items? Took me six months at Denny's to buy this rust bucket, but it's my rust bucket. Well, I said I wasn't going to read this stuff, and then I go and do it anyway. Kind of interesting, too, like, it, it sort of navigates you through the environment in an interesting way. So I only sneaked out my window once. Living next to church was so gross. And the language that it uses a lot of times actually really does sound sort of like a girl speaking casually. And it's rare that you can get, like, the art, the concept, the language, like, all of the elements sort of line up in a way that comes across really classy and, and well presented. I think I need to get over there. Let's, let's see what's up with this, if I can make this huge jump. Okay. And then we're probably gonna just take whatever we can find after this. Damn it. Come on. Sorry, hopefully I haven't been jerking the screen around too much like I said I would try not to do. Uh, the frame rate is not perfect. It's not bad when I'm playing it, but it's just because I'm recording. And I don't want to kill the experience. 
There's obviously some pretty weird jaggies where those meshes line up, but that's okay. Whoa. What the hell? These are those fancy shoes. You might as well get the fancy shoes. I don't see the harm in that. And can we find one more that's not a hideous experience for her? Can we get down over here without falling off the world, please? Thank you. The church. What does the church have to say to us? I don't feel like there's a whole lot of good things that can come of this place, but let's see. Dollar? Uh, if that's to teach us to tithe to the church, then I don't want to uh, do that. Oh, come on. That's cheap. I totally made that jump. Go. Hurry up. Of course, I have to fall millions, zillion miles that time. Alright, let's try that angle. It seems like if you shoot at it like a 90 degree angle, you do better. Oh, it's a Bible. Wonderful. Well, I don't want that either. What's well, all the way over there? Something a little bit more wholesome than the Bible. Earrings? Earrings we can do. Oh, oh, what does this say? Mrs. Godfrey said these were too glitch glitzy for church. Well, that's fine, because who cares what church needs. Uh, land on something? Thank you. Alright, let's go back. We've packed our boxes. Well, our internal head boxes, at least. And I believe this is where the house lies. Yes, it is. And we've navigated the majority of the environment. I think there's probably still a few other secret areas. Not secret, but out of the way or difficult to jump to areas we haven't quite made it to, but that's okay. We don't have to see everything. I want there to still be a little bit of a surprise for you guys to uh, come across if you just decide to play this yourself, and I do highly recommend that you do that. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure that there is an ending to this. I mean, maybe the ending is that you've filled up your mind's boxes and you're done. Like, this is this is your character now. It's not telling me to go specifically to a certain place, so maybe that is the end. But I think we've had a very interesting experience going through this, and I hope you appreciate this as much as I do. Uh, games are art, and I defy anyone to come up with a better example of it than this. So, think about games, think about your life, think about indie games, and what things like this can do to evolve the whole industry, because I think we have a lot to learn and a lot to go still to progress forward. But thank you for watching. Make sure to head on over to facebook.com slash indie impressions where I post every night's video and you can leave comments and speak to me. I also have a Twitter at Rockley Smile or at Indie Impressions where you can send me any kind of requests or if you just want to talk about whatever. Uh, I will be happy to field any questions or whatever you need to say. And thank you for watching, guys. I will be back again tomorrow with another episode. And if you can find anything like this game, please recommend it. I want more games like this. This is one of the most interesting ones I've looked at so far. Uh, as hopefully you can tell through my language in describing it. And I'm very grateful to the developers who made this for making this. This is the stuff we need to see more of. So, thank you guys. Talk to you tomorrow. Later.